Hey everyone, welcome to my B set. So this is gonna be the set I'm probably gonna be using from now on for all game controller reviews or anything retro gaming that doesn't actually need my technical setup with my tools. It's a little bit more aesthetically pre pleasing. You get to see the consoles I'm working on, the games I'm working on and whatnot. So I hope you guys like it. Now, let's get to the issue at hand. We're here today because like me, you probably know that if there's something that can either elevate your gaming experience or make it crash and burn, it's the controller you're using. And in the case of the Nintendo Switch, although we get a perfectly functional controller when we buy the system, we're not maybe getting the best available controller for the system. And that is the dog face controller. It's okay, it gets you where you need to go, but depending on the type of game you're playing, it's maybe not giving you the best available experience. So I decided that we're going to review controllers on the channel. And before I wanted to do that, I wanted to sort of explain to you guys in detail how I go about my review process. Because controllers are very subjective. A controller that I love, you might hate, and vice versa. But if I show you guys how I review the controller, it'll probably let you know if you will be coming to approximately the same conclusions as I did. So, basically, if you're watching this video, there's only one of two reasons that you're here. Number one, you've seen another one of my controller reviews and you want to know in detail how I got to the results I got so that you know if it applies to you. Or number two, you actually want to know what I think of the dog face controller. I don't really think you're here for that. But nonetheless, we're going to do a test run on my you know, evaluation process using Nintendo's own dog face controller. So stay tuned and now let's take a look at, at my process. So my controllers are going to be rated out of 55 points. And the first one of those categories is a category going from 1 through 5. And basically it is overall build quality and feel of the controller. Now this is the only category that's going to be 1 through 5. All other categories are going to be 1 through 10. The reason this category is actually only 1 through 5 is I wanted to have slightly less weight as the other categories just because, in my opinion, it is the most subjective of the categories. Because the feel of a controller is not going to be the same for one person to another. Our hands aren't the same size and maybe I like a lighter controller, you like a heavier controller, so forth. But at the same time, I thought it was really important to have a category where I could deduct a few points from controllers that feel like they're coming from the dollar store and might break after a day or two. So basically, if we apply this to Nintendo's dog face controller, I would rate this controller a 4 out of 5. Why not a 5 out of 5? Well, because, because it's built from three separate parts, honestly, the controller does feel like it's a quality controller. It is a first party controller and we know that normally Nintendo stuff over time does hold up. However, I feel that being composed of three different parts, there is a little bit of wiggle to the controller when you apply a lot of pressure to it. And at the same time, I'm scared that over time, if you're an intense gamer, if you play a lot of fighting games where you put pressure on this, on this controller, I'd be scared that there would be a little more wiggle that will form between the separate parts. Which is why I can't give it a 5 out of 5, because although I know this will be a good controller over time, I'm not sure it's going to last 20 years like, a, in my opinion, a 5 out of 5 build quality and feel controller should last. So that is the first category we're going to be using. Now, moving on to the second category. The second category is a little bit more straightforward. It is features and aesthetics. Now, features and aesthetics, you could break it almost down into two parts, because the first five points of the controller is either you have them or you don't. And those are the five basic features that come with the dog face controller. This is the perfect example of it. Number one, is it wireless? Number two, does it have a rechargeable battery? Number three, is there a rumble? Number four, is there a gyro controls? And number five, does it recognize ami amiibos, meaning having NFC integrated into the controller? So this, the first five points out of aesthetics and features, it's either you have them and you don't. And in the case of the dog face controller, well, it starts at five. It has all those basic features. And just to not penalize wired controllers too much, I will only be dedu deducting one of the two points between a uh, wireless and a rechargeable battery. Because basically, obviously if it's a wired controller, it isn't wireless, but at the same time, it doesn't need batteries. So I'm not gonna deduct a second point for not having a rechargeable battery in it. 
The other five points are basically going to be added to the controller score for you know, overall really, really special aesthetics. So a controller that has an awesome aesthetic to me merits at least an extra point or two in this category or any extra features, sort of, you know, programmable buttons, a turbo function, stuff like that. Now, in the case of the dog face controller, honestly, to me, it would be a five out of 10. It has all the basic features. They work perfectly, but at the same time, aesthetic wise and additional feature wise, it doesn't have anything special going for it. And although I'm not gonna say the dog face controller is ugly, I do not find that aesthetically it's worth any extra points. So the dog face controller would, in this category, hit a five out of 10. Lastly, we're gonna have the applications to gameplay. Now this is the vastest category, it's making up 40 points, and basically it's gonna be divided into four different sections. In my opinion, what are the four major types of games that are, that are affected by the quality of your controller. Now, I don't want to start an argument that there are only four types of games out there. I know there are way more than that. However, there are, in my opinion, four types of games that are majorly affected by the quality of the controller you're using. And basically, an example of a category of game, in my opinion, that isn't affected too much by the quality of your controller that won't be represented is, for example, traditional turn-based RPGs or strategy RPGs. I'm not saying the controller is zero important, but overall, you won't say that, for example, Final Fantasy VII is a weaker game because you're playing it with a different controller, okay? But the other types of games that we're gonna look at, you might say that. The first category, and let's go over the four categories really quick, is 3D action games and FPS games. I group them together because often, overall, they're looking for the same qualities in the, from the controller. And basically, examples of these games will be Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, or on the FPS side, Doom would be the best example. The second category we're going to be using will be 2D games and 2D platformers. So once again, examples of these games will be Mega Man 11, uh, Hollow Knight, and so forth. Lastly, um, no, second, or second to last, sorry about that, we're going to have fighting games. Now, fighting games are a genre in their own, and I would say that this is probably one of the categories that is most affected by the quality of the controller you're using, and a lot of people out there will be able to uh, agree with me in my opinion. Uh, and they're really not looking for the same qualities in the controller as the previous categories. And the last category will be racing games. Oh, if you want examples of fighting games, we have uh, King of Fighters, we have Street Fighter, any type of gameplay that is basically a traditional 2D fighter. And lastly, we're going to have racing games. Now, racing games are games like Mario Kart, Crash Team Racing, so forth. Uh, you could even group th theoretically into the same category flying games, uh, like Starlinked and whatnot, because they'll often be looking for the same qualities in the controller. And all of these categories are going to be rated from 1 to 10 in their respective categories. And what's really beautiful about the way I'm going to do this is that when you're going to be looking at a review of mine, you will see in each category what the controller got, meaning that the best controller will not be necessarily the same controller for every gamer out there. Why? Because if you primarily play 2D platformers, the best controller for you will not be the same as the person who mainly plays fighting games, and vice versa. And basically, the scale going from 1 to 10, if we go through the intervals really quickly, I would say 1 to 3 is, if a controller gets 1 to 3 in a category, that means that in that category, you are actually diminishing the pleasure of the gameplay by using the controller you're using. Okay, uh, if we go from four to six, you have a controller that is okay in that category, but you're probably going to be living some frustrations at some point. If we go seven, eight, seven and eight, that would be a good controller for that category of gaming, but overall there are still maybe a few flaws or there are probably better options out there. And if a controller hits 9 or 10, that means that the controller was either 
built for that category of gaming or it just applies so well to that category of gaming that it will actually elevate your experience of the game itself by using that controller for that game, in my opinion. So overall, that's how we're going to be rating the games. Now, to finish up the last part of this video, we're going to go through how it's going to look like when we rate a controller for the games. So you're going to be looking at some gameplay, hearing me talk over, and basically we're going to be rating the Dogface controller for the four types of games that I'll be using. So now, the gameplay review for the Dogface controller. First category, action and FPS. So in this category, I would give the Dogface controller a decent 6 out of 10. Why? Because overall, all the functions are there. Gyro functions are there when you need them. All the buttons work well. They're responsive. However, the travel on the joysticks is only so-so. And over a long period of time, I find that the format of the controller isn't comfortable for long play sessions. After a while, you're going to be fed up. To me, it's also a little bit too small. And, you know, like I said, for long gameplay sessions, when you need to be using the two joysticks, my hands are not sitting comfortably on the controller. And lastly, not having a traditional D-pad, if ever at some points of the games you need that D-pad, to me is a big negative, keeping this controller from hitting a higher score for this category. So, for action FPS, it's, an, it's a decent score. Let's move on now to 2D games and 2D platformers. Now, for this category, the Dogface controller is going to be getting a 4 out of 10. Why 4 out of 10? Because unfortunately, this category is seriously hampered by the fact that it does not have a traditional D-pad. It's not getting, however, any lower than a 4 because over time, you will be able to be perfectly functional and adapt to the gameplay with this. It'll just never feel great, in my opinion. I tried, I, I really tried hard. I tried like at least, I would say, 10 hours of gameplay on Mega Man 11 and um, Hollow Knight. Although I wasn't getting, you know, bad entries, like I wasn't getting, you know, bad direction entries, doing diagonals on this controller just really is not comfortable whatsoever. And to me, it really feels like it's a detriment. So for this category, unfortunately, the Dogface controller will only be getting a 4 out of 10. Moving on to the next category, fighting games. And in my opinion, this is going to be the biggest challenge for the Dogface controller. To me, it gets, unfortunately, a 3 out of 10. 3 out of 10 because in this category, the fact that, once again, you do not have a traditional D-pad, and I'm sorry, this is going to come up a lot, but the fact that they, did, they decided to do these four separate buttons rather than a traditional D-pad, to me, is really, really a very negative point. And you can even see Nintendo sort of agreed because on the Switch Lite, they're going to be putting a traditional D-pad back on, this, on, their, on their system. But will you be able to one day play a fighting game with the Dogface controller? Probably after hours and hours and hours of muscle memory. But I'm not willing to put that much time into it. I would say I easily have at least 20 hours of gameplay on a Street Fighter Anthology Collection you trying this controller out to see if I could actually get to the point where I was comfortable doing every move on this controller. And unfortunately, if you have a character with a lot of half circle moves, this controller to me is a nightmare for that. You could ultimately adapt to using the joysticks, but the joystick travel on this controller is really insufficient to get a decent experience on that. And honestly, over time, I'd be scared that I would snap off or damage the joysticks using a fighting game since fighting games often get pretty intense moments where you're, you're putting a lot of pressure on that controller. So unfortunately, in my opinion, this is the weakest category for the Dogface controller. Fighting games is really not its forte. And lastly, we have racing games. Mario Kart, Crash, Team Racing, whatnot. And in my opinion, this is a 7 out of 10. This is probably the best overall category other than action FPS for the Dogface controller because everything's there. All the buttons function and you can easily, in Mario Kart, the controller actually, you know, takes 
two button inputs very easily. You can hold R while changing the direction pad, but it's not going to get stronger than a 7 because of that travel on the joysticks. If you've ever played Mario Kart with a, any pro controller, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll feel much more in control of your cart and in small direction fluctuations with a joystick with a bit more travel than these have. But at the same time, I understand why Nintendo did it this way. When these are attached to the Switch itself, you can't have joysticks sticking out by an extra half inch. It'll aesthetically be bad, it'll be, and you risk breaking them off in most cases and whatnot. I understand why Nintendo did this. So this isn't to bash the dog face controller. It's to show you guys how I review my game, how I'm gonna review my controllers, my God, sorry about that. And overall, it's a test run for that review process. So if you've gotten this far in the video, I think you have a really clear idea of how I review my controllers. And I basically made this video simply because I didn't want to have to go over this process in each and every controller review. And for someone out there that really, they like the technical side of how I got to the numbers, not just what the numbers are. Because I know there's a lot of you there you're gonna skip straight to the numbers and say like, ah, oh, this controller was good in this category, bad in this category. I'm going to buy it and you're going to skip half the video. But for those of you out there that don't skip the videos and really want to go into details, well, this is an accompanying video that will help you guys out. And at the same time, it'll give you sort of the, the base that we're setting ourselves with the dog face controller that comes with the Nintendo Switch. So it'll be easier for you to guys to take this score and compare it to the others. So overall, what does this mean for the dog face controller? So, Overall, the dog face controller scored a big 29 out of 55. And why is this important? Well, in my opinion, when we're going to be reviewing controllers, anything that hits under 29, why are you buying it? Unless the score is so strong in one of the categories of gameplay that you play a lot, why are you buying a controller that is scoring less than the free controller that comes with your Switch? That is why this review and this video might be important for you. Anything under 29, and I'll be referencing it when I'm doing my controller reviews, in my opinion, I'll be strongly re recommending that you forget the controller and just use your dog face controller. Like I said, unless there is one specific category that the controller scored very strongly and the dog face controller scored very weakly. And 29 out of 55 for the free controller that comes with your Switch isn't a bad result overall. It's almost a passing grade. So I hope you guys liked my video and catch me in the next one. Anything I can do better, please let me know down in the comments. I'm also gonna be leaving uh, some Amazon affiliate links for the Switch and some accessories down there. Cause if you wanna help the channel out, you can use those affiliate links. If you're gonna buy them anyway, hey, why not help me out at the same time? And like I said, if not, I'll catch you in my next video.